Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Carson Scott. Big news when it comes to employment law uh, this week. Saifath Shaw poaching a stable of rising stars from Herbert Smith Freehills. They're a so-called dream team, regarded by some as the best industrial relations practice inside the country. Well, Joy D. Poor is from People and Culture Strategies, and Stephanie Quine from Lawyers Weekly. Let's break this all down. Warm well, welcome to you both before we go and get some gospel truth from the company itself. I'm intrigued because just set the scene, Joy D. You're front and centre in the space in Australia. Do we have room, first and foremost, for what's a very kind of US-centric proposition, albeit they've got add-ons in Shanghai and London, but their bread and butter business has been in the US. Persuade me that that resonates with an Australian employment law environment. How do you draw and get synergies from one to the other? Yeah, I think um, the, the transition of a, a successful brand in, in the US, as Safe Arth Shore is, mm -hmm. uh, into a, a very... Um, national-centric and even state-centric jurisdiction like employment law is in Australia is uh, going to be a very interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. um, there's always room for quality in the market. Uh, clients want quality, but clients are looking for uh, competition not just in terms of having access to global brands, which I think is of limited relevance uh, in a country like Australia, but more to who's going to be competitive on, on price and ultimately in the employment law space, who's going to get them the outcomes they want. And, and a lot of it is very personal relationship driven. Um, you're, you're after someone who you can confide in in your most confidential, sensitive matters when it comes to sacking people. And how long does that people. take typically? Or, I mean, it's, it's like saying how long's a piece of string, but how do you determine that you've got that trust and requisite confidence well, I inside mean, that? There, there are clients I've been servicing for 14, 15 years and my trust with those clients continues to evolve. So wow. it's, a, it's a work in progress and, and you've got to be in the trenches with them and uh, you've got to show that you, you can be trusted. Mm -hmm. um, having all the great legal pedigree and, and, and all the, the accolades is one thing, but you've got to deliver for those clients. This is the thing, Stephanie, with the legal pedigree and we just sort of named some names there. We've got, um, we've got Azhurst, we've got Arnold Block Liebler, we've got, um, of course, uh, uh, Herbert Smith Freehills. These people can't actually start. The firm really doesn't get underway, does it, here, until they've all seen out their due and owing obligations. So yeah. it's all a, a little bit delicate around that. Yeah, it's quite problem. uncertain, and mm. so there'll be different arrangements for different partners in terms of gardening leave, whether mm. some are out on the street straight away. But I think there was an article today in the Oz that, yeah. uh, you know, it'll be at least a few months until the firm is up and running in Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. And what conceivably might then inter interfere with, with best plans now, Joy Deep, because it would seem to go just into employment law where back in the US they spread the net. Do you think they kind of look afresh at that proposition uh, and wonder to themselves, can we really justify being specialist versus generalist? Yeah, I, I think there are a number of uh, yeah, firms, ourselves included, who are a specialist firm. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not a, an untested proposition in Australia, and we'd like to think that it's, it's a successful mm -hmm. proposition in Australia. Well, you uh, set that up, though, did you not, with that exclusive remit front and centre, whereas their kind of their DNA is across many different areas. So just people would kind of do their research and perhaps raise some questions. You know, why just one sector here versus the spread? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think ultimately it'll come down to what is the type of work that this firm is going to do. Mm. Now, if it's going to be largely cross-border transactions, then um, is that very different to the proposition that, that an Allen & Obery or a Clifford Chance or, or the other firms who've set up here uh, mm. are going to have? I appreciate that naturally the focus is on the employment side of things, right. but there, there will probably be some need if that is the type of work that's going to be done. Clients looking for that cross-border specialisation will say, great to have you in the employment space, what are you going to do for us in the corporate space mm. or the banking space or whatever, but they're all matters I'm sure that uh, have been thought through at least on a preliminary basis by so far. Stephanie, what do clients want increasingly? You know, Joy Deep's model is, is there in the marketplace. This is, this is about coming in and trying to shake up I existing uh, practices. Are you hearing the specialist model has, is, is what really clients are opting for in this environment? Because we've certainly seen exodus at the top of diversified mm. uh, platforms. Yeah. You know, it seems every week 
there's there, there are fresh questions and a lot of it comes down to deal flow does it not I mean just mm. where is the work to be found mm. and even even alliances that have been you know declared and and trumpeted months ago look shaky mm. between us and perhaps overseas entities yeah sure I think counter cyclical work life disputes and uh, workplace relations is is just going gangbusters at the moment in comparison to m a which is which continues to be flat mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing in the market is that clients don't want to pay for a full service firm. They want focus and they want specialisation. And I think that we might see, uh, particularly US firms, taking a more forensic approach when they do enter the Australian market and going in, in, in as there, there, there is a question over how specialist they will be, but with a focus and a specialisation. And we saw that again a couple of weeks ago with Kennedy's, mm -hmm. which is a, a global but a specialist dispute resolution and insurance firm merging with a global aviation firm to get that extra capability. Yes. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're, they're increasingly um, you know, winning work over some of their more other specialised competitors. Georgie, what's the positioning when it comes to where we take our cues from as employment law evolves and as we look at, out now to an election and a possible fresh take on uh, the current settings? Is there an argument to say that the US is a jurisdiction that perhaps the, you know, the tribunals are sympathetic to or at least the, the Fair Work Tribunal, to be precise, can look to that? to that corpus of law and say, you know, we can we can take a little bit from that? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I mm. think when the good faith bargaining laws were introduced, certainly there was some precedent taken from the, the, the US context. But Australia has its own unique history when it comes to employment and industrial relations. And I mm. think what we've seen here in Australia over the last decade is a shift from quite a strong IR union versus employer battleground mm. being very much front and centre in the in the employment law space to what in more recent times is far more human rights, individual employment a, and a stronger emphasis on that, that individual employment mm. relationship. And I think that trend is going to continue. What we know from the coalition is that there are no sweeping reforms that are going to happen in the first term Overnight. of the coalition government. I notice that you're not ruling those out and, and they're not ruling them out, but no. it's just term one will be quiet. A absolutely. Okay. I think the Productivity Commission will have something to say about all of that. I want to just pause there. We're going to take a very short break. Joy Deep and Stephanie, we may endeavour to return to you, but when we come back after this one, uh, we're going to go in direct, direct to the source, Safeworth uh, International Head Darren Garner joining us. Stay with us. So what did you end up getting? I bought a Jeep. You bought a Jeep? Mm-hmm. I bought a Jeep. <laughs> 